Hello. Welcome back. Uh, lots and lots and lots of messages. But I'll just go through the important stuff again. Um, first of all, we didn't find any sites with any of our remote site searching spells. Um, we had an interesting event here where one of our scouts was actually hit by Mindhunt, but resisted it. And this is a scout that's sitting in a TNG province, so I feel like maybe that's Abyssia Mindhunting TNG, and he hit my scout instead. Who has 10 magic resistance and resisted. So, fairly impressive. Um, we also had this report from Bandai Log, that a spell passed through the Dome of Flaming Death. Uh, Triggered an event that's down here. Um, Caught eight blood slaves, had lots and lots of battles. None of these are too interesting. We can see some provinces being exchanged between Abyssia and Ten Chien Chi. It seems like they're just raiding and counter raiding at the moment. Um, in the Shadow Glades, just me taking a province off uh, Tian Chi and Grey Barrier. Also, me just taking a province off Tian Chi. Shadow Glade was a little bit interesting because he has this. Um, Living Mercury that he's commanderized and given a lifelong protection to, um, which summons imps every turn. So my Detani gets stuck just hitting imps every turn that keep spawning. So I feel like I'm probably quite lucky that his Living Mercury ends up walking forwards because it can't do anything else. And eventually it walks into range and I kill it. But if it didn't do this, if it had some kind of ranged attack or... I don't know, I guess it hasn't got arms or anything. Maybe if it had a miscellaneous item that let it do a spell every turn? Or something? I'm pretty sure... Well, I don't know who would have lost that. I, I mean, I guess eventually we would have hit the turn limit, because my Detoni would have just stood there constantly killing them. But it's something to be aware of, I guess? I don't know. I'm sure AI Alm throwing another little stack at Citiz. I don't think Alm's got many units left now. Um, Citiz, look, Citiz lost quite a lot of stuff as well, but he still managed to repel it. That's the swamp over here. Citiz also took the um, throne this turn. That was the battle in uh, Bithine. Again, nothing too interesting. It's totally empty fort. But we get to see Citiz's army again. Um, which is still just mostly mundane rubbish and a couple of spellcasters at the back um, so that's this stuff uh, another exchange between Tianqi and Abyssia Tianqi throwing some ghouls at Abyssia and having them repelled and then there were three battles for us specifically into Alm uh, one of them was Alm throwing some units into the province where I was moving towards that fort we repel that quite easily. And the other two of me just taking provinces. I lost that priest with the amulet of the fish, unfortunately. Um, and then the fortress in the throne province we took. Um, it's not really worth watching, I'll just briefly bring it up. But um, again, it's another fairly empty throne, so we buff up. Cast a few spells. Walk forwards a bit. And um, that's about it, really. Didn't lose any sacreds this turn. Did lose a priest, unfortunately. And that's about it. Um, events aren't too interesting, but we did get hit by a plague again in Bandar Log. So someone else has cast this spell on Bandar Log this time. Um, that, of course, absolutely guts the income in this province down to. 189 now, which is still great, but not what it was. Unfortunately, the Erd, the province I just took, has a great gold mine in it, which brings 100 gold, so it kind of balances out, actually. Other event to mention is Inspire Woods. Uh, we found the Dryad. This time it just cursed 10 of my units, though. So, not really as, um, not really as good as last time. Fortunately, my Pretender didn't get cursed, though. Uh, worldwide events, one of them is Maka Ma Mabakiel, the bringer of misery, has been summoned into the world. In his wake, disease is spreading. Three units have been diseased. A lot of that going around. 
Uh, and that's about it. So that brings us to this turn. Uh, these are the two provinces, no, these are the two provinces that we just took off Tianqi. You can see that unfortunately one of my Titanus has decided to go insane again this turn. Um, he's going to be pillowing Shadow Glade. We can see a few interesting bits and pieces here now. We can see another um, demon raiding force of Tianqi's over here in Living Mark. We can see in Zabalba he's got uh, Ruax, the King of Magma, which is one of the elemental kings of fire. We already know that he's got the elemental queens of water as well, because one of them is currently holding the Ventral Water enchantment. Just not sure which lake she's in. Uh, and we can also see Cities is God again. Um, it says the province contains two enemy units. It's very possible that this is his God plus like a shaman or something that has Astral One. Um, he might have seen that mind hunt message the other turn and got wise to um, the fact that he was vulnerable. But uh, we have no way of knowing, unfortunately. The scrying information doesn't actually tell us what the other unit is. So this turn I am going to hit this province with a few mine hunts. Um, I spoke to Citizen and asked him what he's doing with his god to make sure I don't bump into it again, but it seems like he might be attacking into this throne, uh, which is fine for now. I'm just going to clean up Alm's provinces before I attack Citizen. Um, but I'm casting mine hunt with um, Longreach, who has two penetration boosters as well as um, two of my little astral two guys. There's one in Cottle Swamp, Temin, um, and another one down in Machaca, I think. Yeah. So they're all going to be hitting Cities' as God with Mine Hunts this turn. If we're really lucky, we'll snipe it out, and that'll save me a few headaches later on. I don't have to worry about bumping into it when I'm raiding. Uh, if we're really unlucky, we might have three feeble-minded <laughs> mages next turn, but um, Gift of Health might eventually cure them, I suppose. Um, aren't many big movements happening this turn because I'm going to linger in Erd for a turn. Um, we need to do a few things here. I'm claiming the throne and putting up a temple here. I'm also casting three domes over this province to make sure we're a bit safe while we do all this. We're casting Flaming Death, um, Arcane Warding and Frost Dome. Also doing a bit of sight searching here, and I'm going to let my giants get their um, armor repaired. Most of them are repaired now, but there are still a few in there somewhere that still have broken armor. So I'll make sure that's all repaired. Uh, I'm also taking this opportunity to increase my siege strength. So currently I have a siege strength of 292. I am having four mages cast reanimation this turn. I think I might stop bringing skeletons into combat, but I'll lug them around anyway for siege strength. They they don't really seem to do much at this point in combat, especially not against Dalm who has a lot of priests. But I think um, four casts of reanimation will be, I think it's 10 skeletons, right? So 40 skeletons. I'm hoping that's at least another 100 siege strength. And then I'm also forging two gate cleavers as well, which would be another 100, gate, uh, another 100 siege strength. So hopefully we can get up to 500 seed strength because we're, we're just about 300 at the moment. Because um, 500 seed strength would let us knock over these forts in one turn. Um, well, probably not because they'll have defense of like, what? Probably like 100 defense, probably more. Um, but maybe with a crumble as well, it'll let us knock over these forts in one turn. Um, so we're doing that now. Also going to take the last Almish province here with my Detanu. And my other Detanu is moving into this province to help defend with Pretender enlarging surgery while he's going insane. Because he is adjacent to this large fortress that does have guardians. So I want to try my best to keep him safe if I can. Um, over here I'm moving a few witches back. Uh, these two. Going back to home plus the one I just recruited. I'm going to send them over to Erd because there are a lot of diseased commanders here now. Uh, and also quite a lot of diseased troops as well. If I hit D, there's two in that stack, three in that stack, three in that stack, and so on. Um, so we need quite a lot of disease healing over here. Um, we've got two witches plus three elixirs at the moment, I think. 
So three more will be three more. Um, it gives eight disease heals a turn. This seems pretty good, I think. Uh, and over here, we're moving these few units onto this little fort here. Uh, there is one Detanu here as well. And I've got an Ermage stood next to him casting Gift of Flight. So when we eventually storm this fort, which might take a few turns, uh, but when we eventually storm the fort, I hope he just flies straight in and kills the handful of troops that are here. Uh, and although this sieging might take a few turns, it's not many troops. I'm not really tying up much stuff. Uh, and I can start putting temples down in this area while it's happening, so it's fine. Uh, I am casting Crumble on that province again this turn. And up here, I've started just rolling out um, quite a large number of troops now. Got 40 Detonis here, and another 20 down here. So 60 in total. Plus some random chaff, some crossbows and stuff. There's a lot of um, Mazix, I might bring a few of those at me as well. Um, lots of mages waiting here too. We'll just let's slowly roll this army in towards the Tiz and then start raiding with the two um, Tarnis that I have over here. Uh, only other thing of note is that I am just recruiting a few units every turn in all of my throne forts. Nothing interesting, but just some extra chaff. Eventually I'm going to be summoning Mazix and Skeletons every turn in all my thrones. I've got them all upgraded to citadels or um, castles or whatever. Um, I'll just make sure that they're as... I'll, I'll start putting um, domes over them all as well. Just make sure that they're as difficult as possible to try and snatch from me. And in the meantime, we're going to claim this throne, probably take this one next, and then take this one. Um, because we can now see that Cataclysm is only nine months away. So it won't be long now before thrones start getting eaten. And we might manage to win this game, as long as nothing goes too badly from here on out. Um, one other tiny thing worth mentioning that I didn't notice before is that we actually got a witch named Sabrina. So thanks for watching. I'll <laughs> see you next time. Hello, welcome back. An enormous list of messages, almost none of which are interesting. <laughs> so, um, we claim the throne. Great. We've seen the throne of fire. Uh, that's really good. We searched for a lot of sites and didn't find any with any remote site searching spells. The only guy who found a site this turn is Decency, who is the Ditanu who I had over here doing nothing. And he managed to find an H1 site, which is pretty funny. Uh, other big news this turn is that large pretender humiliation cast mind hunt. The mental attack on Florida's number one pet supply store was successful. Um, yeah, we killed Katizi's god. That's really, really nice. I'm very happy with this turn so far. Uh, not many battles to report either. We spied just some basic exchanges going on between AI, Alm, and Satiz. And we saw Tian Shi throwing some more ghouls into cities unsuccessfully. And then we took Robber home with our Ditanu, which is this province here. Uh, events weren't very interesting, we found some nature gems, that's about it. Disease is still in Erd. Giant Castle is up in Morn. Almost destroyed the fort uh, to the south of that lake in Elmish territory. And that's it. So there are now, let's see, eight months until Cataclysm. We need three thrones to win currently. Um, so this section of the map is now the most important section of the map in the game because there are three thrones here, all within striking distance of one another. So my goal for the next eight turns is to cap all of these thrones. Um, I'm not sure if we can do that in 8 turns. But even if one of the thrones that gets eaten is ours first, once Cataclysm starts. And I don't actually remember how quickly that starts happening, but... Either way, I think as long as we can try and take these 3 thrones as quickly as possible over the next 8 turns... I think we should win the game. So there's... 
two major things that are happening. I'm still trying to make sure that I'm defending my thrones as best as possible. Um, this turn it's the Parched Expanse that's getting dome treatment. Uh, four domes are going up in this province. Um, the Frost, Astral and Fire ones as usual, and also the Nature Dome as well. This province is going to be very safe. And I'm continuing to just recruit little bits of chaff in all my throne fortresses. Uh, Morn is now getting Mazics and Skeletons every turn. Because it seems to be the most vulnerable to some shenanigans from Tian Chi. Um, and I'm also now trying to move units towards Summerlands to take this throne next. Um, so first things first, we have a lot of disease commanders now in Erd. So I've had to split the army up into commanders with no diseased units, and then all of the diseased units under a commander that isn't diseased, so that we can cure the commanders first, and then cure the units afterwards. So this turn, all of the diseased commanders, with all of the undiseased units, are going to start rolling towards Summerlands. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a fast route for me to do this, no matter what. Uh, even if I move to Waywards now, it still takes me two turns to get to Summerlands. So we're going to go through Robberhome, and then into Shadowglade, and then into Summerlands. It's a shame that it takes so long, but can't really be helped. Um, I thought I'd go on the inside path, a bit further away from Tianqi. Tianqi does have Dominion in this area, um, somewhere. Yeah, this province, Grey Barrier, has Tianqi's Dominion. So I want to avoid Vengeful Water attacks if possible. Um, and moving through these provinces also possibly protects me from attacks from AI Arm. If AI Arm starts throwing random units into these provinces, hopefully they bounce off my army stack. Um, my Prophet has all my diseased units. He can just hang around in Erd for a turn and preach. Um, hopefully the Bane Venom Charm doesn't go, doesn't um, disease him this turn. But we will have, I think it's eight or nine witches plus elixirs in this area. So once all the commanders are cured, I think we're fine. Um, so Summerlands is our first target. Uh, I'm also moving all of my Detonus around here into this province. Um, three of them to be precise. Um, they will try and take this province from on, but more importantly, I'm hoping that Katiz rolls this stack towards this throne. And so, you know, hopefully we can kill this whole army stack just with three Detonus. Don't know how likely that is, um, but from what we've seen, his army is mostly mundane chaff, so I'm hoping it goes okay. We have three guys with firebrands. One guy flies and is set to attack Rhea, and he's had quite a lot of success doing that most of the time. Um, yeah, so the goal is here to hopefully take this province and then hopefully also catch this big stack and just kill it all. And that makes Kitiz pretty much irrelevant at that point. Um, if we manage to kill this Kitizian stack, then the army that's going to take Summerlands is just going to roll straight onto Bivine and take that next. And that leaves all these units that I'm moving up free to roll towards Cliffport to take that throne instead. If we don't kill this stack, then we might have to keep using some of these units to come up and pressure the throne from behind. I don't think we're going to have too much difficulty with Satyrs either way. Uh, I'm, I'm also not too bothered if we lose the Detanas at this point. They've pretty much served their purpose. What we need to do now is just crack open three forts. Um, I don't care about raiding. I don't even care if my provinces get taken now. As long as we have routes open to get onto these thrones, that's about all that's important. Those are the main movements up here. Got armies rolling out, Titanus moving here, Witches moving around. Uh, I'm trying to recruit a couple of H1 priests from provinces in this area and recruit chaff wherever I can in this area because my plan is to, in a couple of turns, I'm moving this Astral 3 guy back to Ashdod because I don't have another Astral 3 guy here. But the Astral guy is going to gateway to Machaco, which isn't domed currently. Uh, once we have a few more units, I'm moving all of the crap that was in Almon over to Ashdod. We'll gateway all of that down to Monarch Woods. Uh, Water Machaca, and then roll that up into Cliffport. And this army should hopefully open this fort this turn. 
We can storm it next turn and then use these units to just sit on Alm and Norfangs to just trap AA Alm in the prevent AA Alm from harassing me any further. I don't think these units are necessary for anything other than that. And at that point the priest can just walk around putting temples down to try and help push out my dominion into Tianxi and Satiz's territory. Uh, only other thing of note is I am forging a blood pendant this turn. This is an item that gives you plus one ritual range for blood spells. Um, that will allow me to hit some of these back provinces over here with Send Horror to burn down some of these temples so that I can move a bit more easily through this area without getting harassed by eventual water attacks every turn. Got three domes up in Erd currently. I'm not too worried about remote spells onto this province. But once I start moving my armies out, we might start getting hit by disease demons or stuff. If um, Tianxi can do that in this area. I do have my Shade Meld S2 guys around just in case anyone thinks they can get away with sniping my Detonus or sniping my Prophet when he rolls out on his own. So that'd be quite funny if we trigger that trap. But nothing else to report, I don't think. Casting Crumble on Fields of Gold this turn. I'll start forging gate cleavers every turn from then on, I think, to make sure we've got a lot of siege strength. We didn't quite hit 500 siege strength with this army, unfortunately. But there is another lab on our route into Summerland, so we could forge one next turn and pick it up the turn after. I'll show off gem income as well. I haven't showed this for a while. We have a lot of gems. 16 fire, 9 earth, 6 water, 17 earth, 31 pearls. 11 death gems and 24 nature gems per turn, plus a free slave every turn. Okay, ending turn. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on turn 66. Hello, welcome back. Uh, we searched for sites, we found one magma pit for one fire gem and one earth gem. Uh, other than that, not much to say, we've now completely covered that throne province in the desert that I can't remember the name of, in domes. It is very domed right now. Um, Katiz has a new prophet, good for him. Uh, Tianxi threw a living mercury at us and bounced off province defense. Katiz threw two priests into Tianxi and bounced off province defense. Uh, Katiz then attacked into that Elmish province that we were also attacking. So let's see how that went. So, here's our three, three Detanus. Who have we got here? Pills labeled Bigger. This is my favorite name, I think, so far of the whole game. Or Pretender Guy and Pretender Enlarging Surgery versus. Uh, this is all of Katiz's army, more or less. He casts Quagmire. I'm pretty sure I've never actually seen this spell get cast before. All units without swamp survival suffer minus one attack, minus one defense, plus two encumbrance, and minus 20% combat speed. We do our little buffs. And then one of our Detonis Dito is set to attack rear and fly mode. He is our lightly geared Detonu. Possibly too lightly geared. <laughs> um, and then we have our other two Detonis who are fully geared. I know that when I started summoning Detonis, I, I said that I'd probably lightly gear most of them. But I ended up just six iming pretty much all of them because I just had so much gem income for the whole game. And they are pretty good for exactly this kind of situation. You just have a ton of mundane chaff. Katiz's army is pretty much entirely mundane chaff, which is... I'm gonna put this on turbo. 
You can probably see where this is going. <laughs> I find it very relaxing to watch this. Kitsis is probably finding it less relaxing to watch this, but... So that was fun. And no afflictions and no afflictions. Wonderful. So that was Iskepni. We killed 416 units, apparently. A lot of those are probably summoned skeletons, though. Um, 118 actual units. We did lose one of our Detonis, unfortunately, and it was probably my favourite Detoni because it was the guy who had the um, extra hit points, which is unfortunate. But that's Kitiz rendered pretty much irrelevant now. He can't even defend the fort that he has on his throne. Uh, three events, nothing too interesting. Lost some population, some barbs, and some misfortune. And that's about it. We cracked open fields of gold. And. Pills labeled Bigger Pretender just got into the Hall of Fame? Yes. He has Extraordinary Agility. So he has a defense score of 26 currently because he's got the um, Chainmail of Displacement as well, which gives quite a lot of defense. But he's pretty cool. Uh, that's it for messages. We are now seven turns from Cataclysm. We're in the end game now, boys. So. Pretty much focused entirely on just capping these three thrones still. But let's go through that stuff. Um, in terms of forging this turn, I'm forging throne capping gear, which is mostly just astral boosters so that I can cast gateway. Uh, some more wraith crowns, I think they're called. Crown of bones so that I can lead undead units. And lots of gate cleavers. I alchemized a lot of gems this turn so that I could forge as many gate cleavers as possible. I want to make damn sure that I can knock over forts in one turn. But that's the goal at the moment. Uh, up here we are still moving towards Summerlands. This is the biggest kind of blockade at the moment. It's just getting stuff onto Summerlands. Uh, we're going to be adjacent next turn, then we can storm it next turn. Well, then we can siege it next turn, then we can storm it the turn after, then we can claim it. So this is four turns to do all this. So what I need to do is make sure that as soon as this throne is claimed, I can immediately claim this throne, which means I need to knock over this throne now. So the plan here is that I'm going to raid Night Marsh with my Titania again. Next turn he's going to build a lab in this province, and then we can use that lab to gateway into, move directly onto Bithine, it should get cracked open in one turn. My Prophet can fly over and claim it immediately. Um, I don't know if we can do all this in seven turns, but we're going to try. Same thing is happening down here. I'm reading into this province, Winter Peaks, with another Titani. Um, he's also going to build a lab here so that it's adjacent to Abyssia's throne. And then I need to claim that throne with my god, I think. So my god can move down here in... Can he move directly there? No. Maybe he can move directly there when I own that province, I don't know. Um, but for now he's just blood hunting. I think we should be able to move to Keeban and then onto the throne either way. Um, and I'm moving all of these units into Barch's Expanse now. We've got one guy here who's capable of gatewaying. And um, we've got a guy in Ashdod who's capable of gatewaying. Summoning a lot of Mazics in this in Ashdod as well. Um, we've got a few skeletons and stuff. I realize that Mazics have 1.6 siege strength per unit. It's slightly better than skeletons, which just have a basic 1 siege strength per unit. So Jera, who I'll rename eventually, is going to gateway a bunch of stuff, probably to this province. Um, 
or maybe it'd be better to use the stuff here because it's it's more because this throne looks a bit better defended than this one but either way you get the idea we're, we're going to try and get away stuff adjacent to thrones in a couple of turns and then try and claim them both in under seven turns i'm just not sure if it's doable but gotta give it a try uh, so that's the plan up here only other movements are just some priests moving around uh, I'm forging a bottle of living water with my water guy, who's also been giving the river shadows so that she can put a frost dome over this province next turn and be a bit safer doing it with a water elemental bodyguard. And over here we're storming the fort in Fields of Gold, because we might as well. Uh, that secures this area and I can start using this Titani to raid from this direction or to sit on Alm and keep him in the fort. One of those two things. Uh, only other thing I'm doing this turn is casting Send Lesser Horror on this province, Cracklands, just to try and harry any um, movements from Tianxi into Summerlands to help defend it. Uh, and that is it for this turn. So I'm not sure we can claim these three thrones before Cataclysm starts. I hope we can, still going to work towards that end. Um, but if it starts to look bad I need to start patrolling around all my forts with... I probably need to forge some... Um, I don't know, I could use with... I could do with having some like Detonis defending throne forts with like a Moonblade or something. Give all my Astral guys penetration boosters to cast opposition. Um, just to help defend against horrors when they start trying to eat thrones. I also need to be prepared to start dumping rituals onto enemy thrones as well, so they can't do that. Uh, that's it for this turn. I don't think there's much else to say. Winning horror. Forging bottle. Still forging wing shoes, they're very useful. Uh, forging lots of gate cleavers. And forging a crown of bones. Oh, and I'm starting to dome up um, Norm now as well, Morn. Uh, I'm moving my other water guy over to Morn and I'm casting Dome of Flaming Death over at this turn. Start getting some domes up over this province, to make sure I can't hit it with rituals. And I'm taking these two provinces with the Tonnes as well, the Tonnes that were here. Okay, so ending turn, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.